It's time for the One Bar and Lepica Show, bringing you anything and everything Minnesota Vikings. Welcome to professional football. All right, welcome back to the One Bar and Lepica Show. I'm One Bar with Lepicus. And in today's episode, uh, we learned some things once again from yesterday's game. We're going to go over the five things we learned from the devastating loss to the Indianapolis Colts. Yeah, these are uh, these aren't really good things that we learned. I don't think there's a single positive one here, but uh, the time for positivity will come. Right now, we are still angry, we are upset, and we are embarrassed. So uh, we're going to talk about the lessons that we learned that were spanked into us yesterday by the Colts. And yeah, I'm sure we'll off. be able to. I'm sure we'll be able to spin some sort of positive thing out of one of these. That that is maybe. our mission to make something positive out of this. Yeah, maybe we'll see. I'm not going to guarantee anything, but uh, the first thing I think we should mention and start with the lesson learned: uh, Drew Samia is not an upgrade over Pat Elfline. Oh God, what a, what a horrifying statement! I mean, that is just the worst possible thing that anybody could say, but. It is true. Drew Samia had a had a real real rough game. Five pressures, gave up a sack. One one thing I'll say here's a positive spin right here. Yeah. Pat elflane has got what two years on him of experience. So comparing him just straight up probably isn't fair. But I think it was just more wishful thinking, hopeful thinking that he's going to come in and be a little bit better. But we got to remember that was his second start in the NFL. It was, and um. You know, I wanted to stick up for him. Then I was, you know, looking at the game again a little bit, and that that uh, shot of him when he gets literally like knocked six yards back, he goes flying, he's on his back, rolling around. Um, that sums it up right there. Yeah, uh, DeForest Buckner was not nice to him on that play. Drew Samia turned into Superman and was in the air, and a guy that big. I mean, he's a strong guy too. That shouldn't happen. So. I mean, we're not we're not uh, offensive line experts on technique, but there must be something severely jacked up with this technique to go flying like that. Yeah, I mean, a guy that big shouldn't shouldn't go that high in the air. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it sucks. We all hope. I think that's what it was, and that's why everybody's so upset. We hope that somebody would be better. That there's somebody on this roster who could step up and be better than Pat Elfline, who's been nothing but a turd, and apparently, at least. There's not yet. I mean, maybe we try somebody else. Maybe Samia's way better in his second, you know, outing here. But uh, right now, it looks like our best bet at right guard is out on IR. Ah, uh, yeah. And we'll we'll keep an eye on what they're going to do. Maybe they put Brett Jones there. Maybe Ole Udo. Maybe Drew Samia's tenure as the right guard is over. But I'm not I'm not completely shutting the door on Drew Samia. Um, no. Let him go back to his backup once once they figure out whatever Elfine coming back. Maybe there's a future for him, but uh, yeah, it turns out the coaches know what they're doing when they put out Pat Elfline. He's the best of the gross. He is. He is that turd that floats the highest in the toilet. So um, let's it. move on. What? Never mind. I was going to say something oh. very bad. Well, you can't have floaters if you always have diarrhea. <laughs> um, another thing we learned yesterday that was painfully obvious, uh, the Vikings can't stop the run at all. No. And, you know, I'll, I'll let you lead on this one. I mean, it, it was painfully obvious. Against the Packers, um, it was it somehow felt nice that we thought we shut down Aaron Jones, but they didn't really try. They didn't – I mean, they were spreading the ball around. A.J. Dillon was getting carries. Uh, they were toying with us. We, we can't stop the run. There's no hope of us even being able to stop the run with the, with the current guys we have. Right now, the Vikings are ranked 28th. Um, in the run defense, giving up 154 yards a game. Last year, they were 13th in the league. So to go from 13th to 28th, that is quite the fall. And the worst part is, there's no signs of them improving in that area. Yeah, I mean, I thought it got a little bit better when Armand Watts was getting more snaps, but that was after Jonathan Taylor. I think they kind of just took him out of the game at that point. I don't think they wanted him to get hurt. Um, and that's the problem. And you mentioned it. Is there a solution on the roster right now? Um, Armand Watts. Shamar, Steph, and Jaleel. I mean, those are basically the three run stuffers that we have. Um, unless you're going out looking for a Snacks Harrison or a Marcel Darius, uh, I, I think this is something that's just going to – Vikings are going to have to live with. And what, what makes it the worst, the most worrisome is if these guards are getting second level and getting to Eric Hendricks and, you know, Wilson and Troy Dyer, whoever it is this coming week, uh, it's going to be horrifying. Absolutely yeah, horrifying. We got we to gotta throw the – 
the front office a little bit of a bone here. They did go out, spend some money on Michael Pierce. So Michael Pierce, we would not be in this situation with Pierce. Jaleel Johnson or Shamar Stephan, whoever it would, that's a that's a decent backup. So we got put into a bad situation. Nothing against Michael Pierce, but they were they did squash this need. It's just yeah, it's, shit happens. Yeah. It's not like the guard issue where they they pretty much said we're gonna go with what we have and not try to get any better here. They did go out and get Michael Pierce. Um again, and what makes it worse, you see the game yesterday afternoon, you see how well Limbo Joseph is playing right now. Um he still definitely has plenty in the tank and you know, maybe you should have kept him around. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. But uh, we'll, I'm sure Derrick Henry, I'm sure we'll shut him down next week and we'll say that a run defense is fantastic. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, all right. So another lesson that we learned painfully yesterday was Kirk Cousins. There's only one receiver he trusts right now, and it's Adam Thielen, and it's, uh, it's Cotton Browns. Yeah, he, uh, hee-haw, great old show. Um, Adam Thielen. Seems to be the only thing on Kirk Cousins' mind when he dropped back. Uh, not only that, he's even the targets he's not throwing to him, it seems like he's just eyeing him down, and then it's too late, and he goes somewhere else. So not even when he's just throwing him the ball, it's just that's all he's looking for. When you look at the targets, Thielen has 16 targets through two games, and the next guy down the list is BC with seven, and then just dwindles. Herb's got five, Justin Jefferson's got six, Kyle Roof has three. It's not even close. And uh, until he starts trusting his other receivers, starts throwing it the other way, defenses are going to focus in on that, and we will be screwed. Yeah, and I mean, even look at Kyle Rudolph. Why? why I mean, he should have earned Cousins' trust, and he, he had Cousins' trust. So I don't know what's going on. If it's because there's no Stephon Diggs right now, uh, and Cousins thinks he has to make a big play and it has to go to Thielen, but that one interception he threw where, uh, I mean, Thielen was blanketed, you know, front and back. He had no chance to catch that football. You got B.C. Johnson wide open there, uh, found a little open area in the Colts coverage. He could have hit him for a first down. Actually, would have been a pretty big game itself. Instead, he's forcing the ball in double coverage, interception, and again, the Vikings just, they dig themselves that hole that they can't get out of. Yeah, and this is a whole different seg- or a whole different episode, but I'm just going to say this. They need to put Justin Jefferson at number two, put B.C. at three, start getting him into the game. If we're going to suck all year, let's at least get him some – Reps, let's get him in the game so so next year he comes out firing. B.C. Johnson, he's a number three. Still pissed off he dropped that ball yesterday. Yeah, and, you know, that's the other thing I was just going to say. Cousins receivers did not do him any favors. When he was looking the other way, you know, to Irv Smith, to B.C., there was some in, uncharacteristic drops um, by a lot of these guys. So, um, again, it was just kind of a an overall whole team failure yesterday. But Cousins definitely is way too locked in on that, I'm feeling right now. All right. Another, another lesson learned, this, uh, this team lacks what usually it is very thick in, and that is leadership out there. There is no, nobody just rallying the troops. There's nobody out there yapping at people, telling what to do. It's like they're a bunch of zombies asleep. Yeah, it's weird. You watch these other games, and you see the fire and energy these teams are playing with, and you're like, where the hell was that when the Vikings were on the field? Uh, you lose Everson Griffin. You lose Linval Joseph. Um, two huge leaders there. Um, Where's that guy who's in everybody rah rah fired up before the game? If Cousins keeps playing the way he is, no one's going to look to him for leadership. Um, yet Stephon Diggs wasn't afraid to call guys out, kind of light these fires. A lot, he got a lot of flack from that. I mean, he got some flack from us for that, but maybe he had a reason to do it. Maybe he was trying to get these guys fired up and ready to go. And um, if he thought maybe the same little thing here and there was, was the way to do that, that's something we definitely are missing right now. Yeah, and I mean, you look at guys like Harrison Smith. Harrison Smith has always been a quiet guy. It's not like all of a sudden in his however many years he's in, he's also going to be the guy. I'm looking for someone like Eric Kendricks, somebody younger. I mean, look at Adam Thielen. I mean, there, there's just nothing. There's nothing out there. Maybe a couple of these rookie cornerbacks, Danzler and Gladney, they were known to be a little fire in college. Maybe they bring that over to the table. But it's, uh, it's painful to watch. It, it looks like they don't even give a shit. It is, yeah. You see Adam Thielen smiling after a drop, um, not getting upset. Kirk Cousins after the game, you know, big old smile on his face talking to Phillip Rivers. And maybe Phillip Rivers said something hilarious to him or told him what he was uh, saying. To, who was he spewing with the whole time during the game? Uh, was it Hill, Holton Hill? Yeah, it was Holton Hill. Yeah, maybe he told him what he told Holton Hill. I don't know. But um, to see these guys, like you said, they don't seem to give a shit. And they're not just losing. I mean, they're getting their ass kicked. And uh, to me, you got to take that personally. Um, and they're not doing it right now at all. Yeah, I, uh, I tweeted this out last night, but next, next week I want on the first drive, I want two personal fouls. I want them to get up in their face. I don't give a shit about the 30 yards. I want Garrett Bradbury to body slam somebody. I want something just obscene to rile these guys up. 
You think he can throw a Titan as far as the Forrest Buckner through Drew Samia? No, that's not possible. It'll never happen again. He's still in the air. Uh, all right. And the last thing we learned, and I, I don't think you can deny this one bit, the Minnesota Vikings are not a good football team um, at, this, you know, at this moment. It's not, it doesn't say they can't get better down the road, but right now I don't know if you can name three teams in the NFL that are worse than the Minnesota Vikings right now. Oh, that's, that's painful. It's painful. Such a huge drop. I mean, to go, I mean, look at, look at, I already said our run defense, 28th ranked. Our pass defense is 29th ranked overall. You look at our offense, we're last in passing and 22nd in rushing. Our rushing is our bread and butter. I mean, it seems like we give up on it way too soon. 29th yeah. in total offense, close to last in first downs, close to last in third down percentages. We're last in everything. And if this keeps up, we're going to be last in the effing league. So we'll be first in the NFL draft in 2020. Who cares? Um, yeah, it, it's, and that's the thing I think we learned the most from one, from week one to week two, after week one, you can say, okay, this went wrong. This went wrong. Um, after seeing a very similar game in week two, it's just clear this team sucks right now. Um, and it's on defense, it's on offense, it's on the coaching, it's on special teams, everything, uh, nothing's firing. There's no cohesion to anything. Uh, and it's the mess and you lose, losing these parts. Uh, you know, we thought maybe these young guys could step up and there might be some growing pains, but I don't think anybody saw this team being this bad at this point in the season. Uh, positive spin moment here. Dan Bailey is two for two in field goals this year. How's that? Negative spin. He's only got two attempts. That's all right. We'll take him. He's two for two. But yeah, there isn't anything you can point out on this team that is looking good. Um, even even pointing to the rookies. Hey, they're they're. It's you can't. We're so bad right now. It's brutal. And I and I think that's why there's. I mean, real reason to be worried. It's not like you're losing a game by a last-minute field goal or you threw a bad interception late that spun it. This team is just flat out getting beat every facet of the game. And uh, for them to also be competitive, it's going to take a while. And by the time you maybe turn that corner and figure things out, the season's going to be lost. So what are you playing for at best, an eight and eight season, seven and nine? I mean, I'd rather be I'd rather be two and 14 than seven and nine. Yeah. Yeah. And the worst part is you watch these other games. Thursday night, the Bengals and the Browns, they're moving the ball. They're doing good things. And it's the freaking Bengals and the Browns. We can't do anything. Go back. You go back to the fire these teams have. You see these young teams, the Jaguars, these uh, – you said Bengals, Browns, this, even with the Chargers. You, I mean, these teams are fighting and scrapping, and they're playing with fire. I mean, I don't know. We just don't have it, and I don't get it. Um, why are the Vikings just so flaccid right now? They're flaccid. They're limp. They're soft. But – this is the fun. This is it. We're putting the bow on this Colts game. We're moving ahead this week. We'll be talking nothing but Titans, and we will be talking about ways we can beat them. And damn it, there are ways. Oh yes. Oh yeah. So until we figure out those ways, I've got a fact for you guys to chew on. I think this fact is actually pretty fitting for what we talked about today. Um, turns out an elephant's penis is strong enough to throw a grown man around, just like the Forrest Buckner. <laughs>